freaked me out, dude. Wow, me too. Because I could see you. We're back in. I was really enjoying that, and it absolutely devastated to be gone. So if nobody comes back on, I'm okay. I enjoyed the conversation. I'm ready to pick it back up for sure. Me know? too. I'm glad that yeah, you enjoyed me because I, I really am too. And uh, if, if hey, nobody's so listening, my favorite grab me the ice. Fill me some ice in there. If it's no one's listening, key. yeah. If, if no, no one, one comes, you can you hear me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for sure. Just so you know, uh, whether anybody hears this or not, I have huge respect for you with what you do with dogs, but. My respect goes way beyond that because of how much you have been working to save our country and protect everything uh, with Homeland Security and for all the years. And I know you're getting ready to retire, right? I appreciate that, Lynn. I, I really do. And and I respect what you do also very, very much. And I love I love that you do things different, man. I, I love it. Um, Thank you. I laugh when I see you know, whenever you're different, you're going to be ridiculed. And, and I, it cracks, it cracks me up that people just don't get it. And I just would love to ask every person, okay, you think that's funny. You think it's stupid. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever, you don't have the ability to do it, you know? So I, I've never seen a dog feel bad. And that's, really important you know that's that's really really important. so i i appreciate that very much i was really enjoying that conversation i was so pissed off even when with that thing the went down man even with the delay i was having a good time yeah i'm gonna have to pour another another drink you know I, i'm gonna and, have and to listen go, i'm gonna have to grab some ice so i'm hearing you i can hear we, you we were we were on there for just over an hour, and over 1,500 people watched that. Oh, really? 1,500 people in an hour. Wow. You know? And, and so, obviously, we're talking about something that's important to people, or at least they're interested in people, or at least there's people that want to come after both of us and want exactly. ammunition. <laughs> One right. way or the other. Get a you know? go, go get your ice. Go get All your right. ice. Go get your drink. Go ahead. Thank you, Sophia. She's a good girl. And we just had to go back. But you know what? If no one comes in, no one comes in. I just enjoyed the conversation. Hmm? I hear you. What are you making? <laughs> She's got some life, doesn't she? You, you got to kind of. You should go to the house. Take an Uber to the house. You got it kind of sweet because you can say, "Honey, can I get another one?" My dogs, my dogs can't do that for me, so I have to get up and leave. But uh, one of the other things I really love about you, Larry, is your family life. And I don't have a family, and but I love working with families, and I love seeing true, true families. You know, none of the stuff where they just uh, these are my kids and that's my wife and that. Uh, no, you guys work together, you travel together, you do everything together, and I love it. Very important. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. I'm definitely very lucky in that area. There's 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 no doubt about it. I have uh I have nothing to complain about except except hey, cheers. Right here. Cheers. cheers. Except I told my wife tonight. I put a baggie of ice in the freezer. I say, hey, babe, here's the ice, right? You know, do you mind if when, you know, when I need another drink? She said, I have to. I can't help you tonight. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. She, well, Hi, Lynn. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hello, videographer. What? I know you my do baby. My baby's getting big. Yeah, she's but that she's not around to do that and, and too much anymore, Lynn. I'm pretty much on thank God for a tripod, but it's not the same. You know, right? it's it, I remember I remember our first video that Sophia filled for me. I think she was seven, 
and we're sitting at the table and I'm talking, and she's like burping and farting while she's filming with an old iPhone. <laughs> She don't tell everybody that she's at an age she doesn't want anybody to know that she farted. I know. I know. You, never been, you know, I'm thinking I'm thinking this video thing's never gonna work for me, you know. That's hilarious. This has been a long time coming, Larry. This has been a long time coming now. Yeah. Long time. I'm glad that this has happened and Fifteen hundred people watching us right now. That's that's amazing. I I'm blown. Yeah, yeah, I was I was shocked when I signed off. I said, "Whoa, that's that's a lot of people for an, an hour's time." You know, that's 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 all. Um, but I I don't remember where we left off, Lynn. But if there was one thing you want, oh wait, I gotta make this public. Damn it, I almost what? forgot. Wow, I have to make it. <laughs> It's okay. I don't care if anybody else knew what I was saying about you. I just wanted you to know that from me. I appreciate it. Well, only friends could see it before. I did um I did a a, a long one with Joel Silverman and I had totally forgot to go into another device and make it public. So, not a lot of people saw it, you know. I was like, "Damn it." And so the first one I did, I went in immediately, and I just remembered now to make it public so anybody who wants to come on can. So let me ask you something, Lynn. Sure. If there was one you wanted to talk about and wanted to discuss or something that was important to you. Hey, Bill. How you doing, buddy? Um, hey, Catherine. What would it be? Hello, Kim. What would it be? What's the one thing that you think we're not focusing on enough in the dog training world or focusing on too much? Anything you want to discuss. If you can sit down with a stadium full of people, people that own dogs, trainers, regular dog owners, what would be the thing you want to talk about? Man, anybody that's worked with me, I, you know, I, I, I travel around and work with trainers and I do uh, interventions in homes for five days. I move into their homes for five days. And the first thing I ever do, and even if it's the, I come back two and three times, the first thing I ever do is slow everything down. It, it's the most important thing uh, to slow down, to see what is happening. And I think the absolute most important thing with dogs is structure. There's there's no structure. Uh, when I ask people what yeah. structure is, what their structure is, they say, well, at eight o'clock we do this. And that, that's a schedule. That's not a structure. I, I believe that there, I have a whole thing. There's a preparatory stage, an execution stage, and a conclusion stage to any one event. And any interaction you have with a dog I consider an event. This helps you not get lost. It's your map and compass. Where am I? What am I doing? What's my purpose here? Where's the speed limits? Okay, now I know where I am. Boom. I'm looking for predictable patterns of balance. Something that the dog can count on. You come home every day at four o'clock and kick me. Great. I got that out of the way. Now that's a joke, but they count, they count so much on predictability and familiar territory. And I think that if we could let go, now don't get me wrong. I love dog training, the obedience side, all of that. But obedience is secondary to behavior. And once we have the behavior. Hey, wait a second. Let me, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Okay. Amen. 100%. I've said it for years. Behavior, obedience is great, but that's 20% of the equation at most. Yes. Behavior is 80% of it. How you live with your dog dictates how your dog lives with you. I've that's said right. it from day one. Continue. Sorry to interrupt you because we agree huh. completely on that. It's the most important thing to understand. You can, because, you know, and I'm not de demeaning any obedience trainer whatsoever. But sit, stay, come, and heal is no different than play dead, roll over, speak. It's taught. Now, once we get the idea and understanding of how to behave, that whole what pleases me thing, 
Now I can throw in a simple word and condition you to do something on command Th because obedience is human. It's human. It requires a human word. It requires a human to condition that word for the dog to then get the understanding of what you want from the conditioning. They don't understand the word. They only understand that this happens, that happens, that happens. And most of the time, I think this is what you want. I'll do this so that you don't do that, you know. But when they have someone like you and other others, there's plenty of great people out there that are completely clear. And let me tell you something. The most consistent, the most fair you can be is consistent, bar none. And if you can get the behavior down, understanding the, the relationship, I don't care how much obedience you give. Give them all you want. Because it's the it's the interaction that matters to me. Behave uh, obedience is verbal. Yes. Stupid monkey tricks. A, a monkey can teach a dog obedience. Yeah, behavior right. is is silent. It's everything. It's everything. It's a vibration it's that comes not verbal. Out of the floor. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And when you can start to understand that, you see things happen with the dog that you never imagined possible. You never imagined possible because the dog opens up to you like it's never opened up before. The dog don't care about sit, stay, down, come, heal. The whole thing with confining a dog to a place board drives me nuts. Absolutely drives me nuts. That's not dog training. I don't you mind teach any dog. teaching the dog the, the place and utilizing it, but that's your go-to and the only thing they do. I don't I don't like that either. And you could teach them five minutes. Okay. Yeah. I could teach a dog to, to go to a place distance in less than a half hour. Period. Any dog. It's it's not the end all be all. I want a dog mm -hmm. going to the place to be activated for something that the dog loves, not doggy jail. There's a big no. difference. And, and the second you suppress that dog to doggy prison, you're ruining its life. It's not living its best life. And you're not going to get the best dog possible. I Again, guarantee that. I promise you that. There's nothing wrong with having a strong duration type place. There's nothing wrong with that. But nothing wrong. nothing wrong with it. If you've got that, this is what I tell people. I, you know, if your dog is mastered place right there and it goes there every time, stays there for as long as you want, move it three feet over, start over. Cause it won't go there again. Cause it's not the same place. You, you get what I mean? Unless you're doing right. like what you do and go back and forth. But when I teach people to, this is where I want your dog to be. And when he does that consistently, I want you to find a new place and do it that way because then the dog understands wherever you want me to be is where I should be. Not just right there. Um, for me. Here's for me. the, here's the thing, Lynn, that's perfect that you said that because what I teach my people is I see these trainers using these place boards. That's place. Okay. I teach my clients, dogs, the place on everything under the sun that we can find in the yes. beginning it's going to be on things they can get on comfortably easy okay as the dog gets better at understanding what we want gets gets more literate to the training more literally to the stupid human tricks i teach that dog to get on more and more difficult and smaller things to where it really has to work to build the confidence, make the dog mm. feel good about it. It's not doggy jail. I want the yeah. dog to work at something, get, yeah. getting on something that's so tiny, especially insecure dogs. And I've always done, if you can get an insecure dog, something on something high, the head comes up. And when the head comes up, it can't be down in the dumps. It can't be. Elevation. It's physically impossible. Elevation, to be. elevation is, an ele is an elevation Absolutely. of status. In this case, confidence. Absolutely. 
So Absolutely. I don't even use, and I, I don't even use the word place. I I just say on because I want them on the couch. I want them on that. I want them on this. I want them on that. So I don't even use. I don't. My, none of my dogs even know the word sit. I'm a freak. I go way against everything. So, but they accomplishing things, especially getting onto something. And I know you use the top of that right. crate that, that's real slippery. Being on that, yeah, build, breeds confidence because they're able to do it. And some dogs, if you guys ever get a chance to watch a video that I have, it's called uh, it's. Breeding confidence or, or accomplishment through a confidence through accomplishment. It's about this dog, Chase. Very fearful. Shit. Every single time someone even looked at it in Home Depot. Every single time. Now, I took this dog and went up and down the stairs inside Home Depot. And when he was like fat tongue like this, I go, okay, we should walk around, take this time. And I let, I got down to the end of the steps and I let him take a break. And you know what that little fucker did? He said, and started going up the steps again on his own. Fucking, I'm getting chills yeah. right now. Thinking, fucking beautiful. On his own. On his own. Yeah. And they just, right. they just need to see that they can do something, especially the, the really broken wings. But absolutely. Absolutely. A absolutely. Matt Luchinzer just said ignition, not suppression. 100%, Matt. Very well said. It does well, with wonders the for dogs. Thing, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no. No, go ahead. No, you're good. So for Speak me, away. I, I have my own little things, and I hope it helps people who want to learn this. So in order to achieve, I just want cooperation. I don't I don't care about obedience. I don't care. I just want to find a level of cooperation. That means we're working together. OK, in order to achieve that cooperation, right. I need to pass the appropriate information so that they can then cooperate. Now, in order to get that that uh, that information passed, I need attention. Now, I know a lot of people understand attention and then information and, and that I'm talking about. If you don't have the appropriate attention, you will pass information, but that does not equal cooperation. So. Do I have this kind of attention from the dog? Do I have this kind of attention from the dog? Or do I have this kind of attention from the dog? Or do I have no attention at all? I can give the information all day long and never achieve cooperation. I want the attention where he's like, what can we do together today? And so when people suppress a right. dog and they tell their client, see, that's calm, submissive. No, that's suppression. Right. And as soon as you get out of the way, he's going to go back to doing what he was going to do. And he's going to get better at doing it faster. So, yes, the suppression thing is, is horrible. Horrible. I think suppression is probably the biggest issue in dog training. I really do. And that's that's where the majority of dog trainers, you know, it, it really is. You watch these dogs and they just, they're, they're broke. They're scared to make a mistake. And when a they dog can. is scared to make a mistake, it's not trained. Now you let know, me back they, up here. They can't for a be themselves. Bit. Let me back up for a little bit for the people who uh, think that I'm bashing all trainers. There are times, there are times where I have to achieve suppression for safety, for my safety, for other dogs' safety, that specific dog's safety, because I got to keep them from doing the next thing. But I don't move forward until that mind goes like then we move on if i have to suppress a dog it's by design and it's only for safety it's when people can't see that suppression is not submission that's all i want to help people see did that make sense all right all right nicole nicole yeah, absolutely. Nicole Cray says, mm, I use a chair for place, but never thought to use something outside on our walks. We'll have to look around. Nicole, when I take my for a walk, the clients, dogs that are here, I place them on everything I could find. All kind of electrical boxes, big, small, anything I could find. Rocks, um, you know, planters, you name it. I get those dogs climbing on things because 
when if I gave one of my own dogs the place command, let's say we're in the middle of a parking lot and I have my dog to place, they're going to look for anything they can find to get them. So people use the place command today. They use one object, a bed or a baseboard. And the dog don't truly know the command. They know to get area. on this thing right here. That's it in one area. Now I take my, I give, <laughs> listen, in two, this 12, 13 years ago, I'm out in Denver, right? I was out there for a few weeks training dogs and I have with me my Rottweiler. I'm in the middle of this parking lot of a shopping mall. And I give Bruno the place command because there was a concrete barrier around a light pole in a, in a shopping mall. You know what I'm talking about? Just a yeah, small yeah. rim, him to jump on. And so I give him the place command because I expected him to go to this light pole. And he will look for something to get on. Unfortunately, the Cadillac first. <laughs> and oh. he was on the hood of the Cadillac before I could even and stuff because to Great, Bruno boy, it know. was he said he dad said place I gotta find something and he was literally looking around I thought he was looking for host and he's going to the light post but the Cadillac came up first so he was like bloop up on the I was like oh god get no go bro you know yeah. it was Can great I want to I want to sure, uh, it, sure. Now, Rule number five in my 10 rules to live by is what would Goldilocks do? And her whole goal is to find balance. Where is it just right? Now, when we're talking about putting a dog on a rock or electrical out, uh, box or something concrete, that's because we've taken the time to teach the dog as many different things as possible. What I do see where right. people overcompensate and they're trying to put a dog on a fire hydrant because they saw somebody else put a dog on a fire hydrant and they're forcing that dog up there and they're hurting the dog or they're putting it on some places they're going to get their leg caught. That's not what Larry and I are talking about. We're talking about teaching the dog an understanding of finding a place because he's had multiple opportunities in multiple environments and multiple sizes and, and, and uh, heights. Don't do your best not to force a dog to do something like a demo dog where that that's, that's my biggest concern is people, this is what I believe, and I apologize. This is what I believe the biggest problem in the dog industry is. People are either overcompensating or they're undercompensating. And there's very few that can get in that middle where Goldilocks exists to have things just right. So they overcompensate, they get suppression. They undercompensate, they get too much dominance or fear. And so we, we have to learn to be a cork on water. And until we can do that, we should not be offering things that that we don't know how to do. That's that's my biggest problem. Anyway, sorry. Len, my, my, my dogs used to fire hydrants and they were on a hundred different things before they would ever do that. It was an issue. I used to teach my dogs how to get on a five gallon paint can, like a little tiny paint can. <laughs> Okay, because they yeah. have to put all four feet together. It's very difficult. I can care less about that stuff anymore. I don't do it anymore. It's you know, not even, that was not all even back even. in the day. No, when I used to have the demo dogs and you used to have to sell people, I'm so grateful that I don't have to do that anymore. Because for one, it's so easy for a dog to slip when it's on top oh. of a fire hydrant and get hurt. So, oh, easy, yeah. You know? I mean, let me tell you, so unbelievably easy is very expensive and time consuming. And then 50% chance the other knee is going to go too. all for what a picture. It, it It's just not worth it. And it's all to sell the fanciness. But at, at, at one time I was definitely there and doing it and I'm glad it didn't last long. You know, oh, I can care less about that stuff. I, I could teach a dog how to do that very quickly without forcing it to. Without forcing it, you know, right. um, took me a long time to get there because I used to hate teaching stuff like that. I didn't have the patience. The beautiful thing is once you slow down and force yourself to slow down and learn yeah. how to teach those things, 
it helps in so many other areas, you know, and, and I did. I knew that was my biggest weakness, having the, the patience to teach a complicated things. And that's why I started doing it, you know. But yeah. once I accomplished it and I knew how to do it and I can get it, I didn't care anymore. I was done. I don't do that anymore with my dog, you know. If we, if we can't do something slow, we have zero business doing it fast. No, no right For to sure. do it fast. And so it, it's important to take your time. And you're welcome, Nicole. Uh, I've just learned how to see the comments. Like the whole time we were talking, I, I couldn't see any of the comments. But now I can see them. Uh, but yes. Oh, could it, you really? Awesome. I, I didn't know I could uh, push a button over here. I am I am technology. So now I can see Me too. everybody. Me too. So it's a good thing we had that, yeah, that break. Uh, How many people are still with us that were with us earlier? That you guys are you guys are amazing that you're still with us and the troopers you're the troopers I appreciate it thank you so much yeah yeah we we, we were in a good groove there I I was really enjoying that John Stansberry you knowing John he says uh hey where'd it go what the what the crap I have my client separate the place and bed bed for a neutral place in the house especially after they've alerted somebody's at the door what do you think about that. Hey, John, as long as it works and the dogs understand it, totally fine. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. How's the how does the dog perceive it? You know, we get people time that say, oh, no, I heard you use this for a command, but I use this. And then they're, they're devastated like there's something wrong. The dog don't give a damn. As long no. as you're consistent and the dog understands it. Go and, go for it, brother. That's that's good. And stuff. A, and on top of that consistency. If you're enjoying giving a bed and a place command and you see that same joy reflected back to you, then I don't care. I That's amazing. If you feel like it's a chore. Absolutely. You feel like you don't want to do it. You have to do it. You got to force the dog. He should know. He should know to sit over there. That's when it's not a relationship. That's you've got you've got right. I've got a whole theory on Stockholm syndrome and every dog has it, Stockholm it, syndrome. It, it becomes a problem, John, when your dog's on a place, any kind of place, and it's scared to get off because bad shit happens. Okay. Yes. You're in a good place. When the dog wants to get on that plate, be like, whoa, okay, what's next? What what's yeah, coming yeah. next? Did I do good? You right. I did bed? good. You want me to but when you want me to bed? When, that, that's right. But when the dog is scared, paralyzed with fear, like there is an underground fence around that place, that's the problem. And unfortunately, there's a large population of trainers that base their whole system around that type of training. That's not dog training. That doesn't make you a dog trainer. That makes you an asshole. And I'll never Before, change that phrase. That's what I'm always going to say. I want to say something on that for you guys too. But but I also want to say hi to Rich there. My two favorite trainers uh, together. So I'm definitely still here. Thank you. But let me tell you something, guys. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate that, buddy. If, if you like chicken, if anybody likes chicken, you know why you can enjoy chicken? Because our ancestors made all the mistakes on eating it raw or undercooked. We get to thank them so that we know how to make a, a million different recipes in chicken. So what I'm saying is mistakes are very, very, very important in your life. When I make a mistake, I have a mantle and I... I billboard that shit. I polish that shit. I covet that shit. And any guest that comes over, I say, hey, come over and look at my mistakes because that's how you're going to grow. And I've made a lot of mistakes. I wouldn't be telling you all of this we stuff if, if I hadn't made the mistakes. But that's the whole point. Larry and I have made the mistakes. You don't need to make the mistakes. Exactly. Exactly. You, you save, stuff, save years, save people yes. years. <laughs> you have no need to make the same mistakes we made. Yeah, but you guys did. But that's the whole point is we're here to help so that you don't have to do that. And you, you should always be feel comfortable to ask anybody. Now, I may not answer everybody's question. I may not even answer anybody's question. But if you don't ask the question, 
That's a failure right there. Not a mistake. That's a failure. Okay. That's a difference. And I'm telling you, I, I, I messed up a lot, but my goal was to improve. Yeah, we all have. My goal was to improve. I never, if I made some mistake, I just wanted to make it better. And you can do that too, but you don't need to make any of the mistakes. I just wanted to say that. No. I know. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. So, up at, yeah, yo, uh, listen, listen, Lynn, my buddy, Tim up in Alaska, Gary, how are you guys? Tim, listen, by the way. I, I, I have over 500 videos on YouTube. There's not a single one of them that I can watch where I don't see things in every video that I could have done a lot better. Every single one, I make a ton of mistakes. Absolutely. I spent so much time, okay, trying to have success in the business years ago, all right? It used to be very difficult when my wife was home on the weekends and then we had Sophia, we had our first baby and you wanted to hang out with them. What's that? Yeah. We want, you know, your wife's going to the pool with the bee and you can't go because you're, you have clients all day. And I used to go to everybody's home. I was always traveling, doing in-home demonstrations and, you know, doing trade shows and street marketing, all that stuff that I had to do to get one person to notice that I was halfway decent with a dog sucked. I hated it. And it was very depressing. When I was in my car with my dog, one of my dogs going place to place, it's a very lonely, depressing place. I hated it. Mm. But I knew I had to do it. it. It was a different time back then. We didn't have yeah. the internet. Right, we didn't have you and Facebook and all this stuff. So if anyone was ever going to know that I was halfway decent with a dog, I had to show them, and that took a lot of man hours. Mm -hmm. People have to do that today; they don't have to do it. And I'm and not bitter about that. It, it's a problem because they don't have to do it, and so they watch two minutes of a video and then go to the next two minutes of the video because there's too much almost. It's like a Rocking a hard place. Right. But you but you know what? You know what, Lynn? I'm not bitter and I don't I'm not angry that the people coming up today don't have to do it. I'm they don't have to do it. I'm happy. And if people that had to do it can save them years from doing all that shit. I'm okay with it. I'm totally fine with it. I don't think everyone has to go through uh, through a shitty situation for years. You know, I'd rather help the young guys coming up not be miserable and not be in a bad, bad place and, and not go through those very lonely times of trying to build a business because I don't think young trainers have to do it just because I did it. I don't think that way. I'd rather help them not have to do, do it. You know what I mean? My only concern is that they don't think they have to do anything. And that's scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do have those also. We do have those yeah. also. But listen, I'm, I'm lucky enough to where I work with so many young trainers between the, the workshops and, and talking to daily. There's a lot of good young people there that want to learn. You know, and there, they, there really is. But they're, they're, they're great, never given credit. You're a great role model. And a lot of people look up to you, and they should. I'm, I don't know that I'm a good role model because I'm a loner, and I don't really want people around me so much, but I do want people so badly to grow. But I want them to want to grow. And I am so happy that you're there for those people. And it's amazing. And I just wish that, that we could uh, – Get everybody to want to take their time and learn. Yeah. All we can do is keep trying, brother. Keep, yeah. Keep yeah. pushing it out there. This kind of turned a little bit sad. Isn't it? We got to turn this back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It. Listen. It's. It, it's. Whenever someone pays you money to work with a dog, that that's a blessing. That is ah. an extreme privilege. 
that so to so, this yeah. day, I am blown away that people pay me to do something that I'm for free. <laughs> I know, you know, right? It's uh, my problem is I, it, I it, it, it for free. <laughs> I'm like, are ah, you keep it? Listen, ah. they, no, I'm, listen, I'm the same way. I throw, I put a lot, I do a lot of free stuff out there because sometimes I just don't want to take the money. I have people that will pay me really good money, work with them, and then they show up to pick up their dog and they're bringing in stuff nice. like this. Nice. Like it's always, I'm like, guys, you don't have to debt. You've already paid. And they're like, no, we, we really appreciate. Like people are good. Dog they're they're all good people. They they you're a magnet for those people, and I, I, it's awesome. Uh, I don't I I did a post the other day. People. I did a post the other day, and I don't. I used to get stuff like this given to me, but I I just got away from everything. But the other day, I'm working with this family, and this 11 year old girl hand handmade a card for me, and it was like you know That's awesome. not just the not just a card. I mean, she took the time to cut things out and, and put things on yeah. layers. And I'm just like, uh, it just like squeezed my heart. There are amazing people out there. There are. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. There's, there's, there's no doubt about, it. you know, just really good people. Um, it goes a long way when people see you treating their animal with compassion goes a really long I mean it means the world to them you know it's yeah. it's everything to them result great everyone loves results but I could tell you the one thing that trumps results when that animal loves you as much as it loves them and those people see you treating that animal with love and compassion that's it they're yours forever you know that 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 is priceless to them. Here's here's one of the things that I used to because I used to have a, a seriously long drawn out school where I kept you for 15 hour days, seven days a week. Thirty, You got you were going to get Stockholm syndrome or dog psychology. But one of the things that I always had to help my students learn because part of their homework was to record all their consultations and send them back to me so that I could uh, help them understand what they did right, what they did wrong, what they should never do again. One of the most important things that, that I had to help them understand is stop trying to impress the client. Just work and communicate with the dog, and that dog will be so impressed by that communication and cooperate with you that by proximity alone, the client is impressed. But to bypass the dog to just impress yeah. the client is, is setting yourself up for failure. Don't. Don't try to do things for social media. Do it for the dog. Do it for yourself. And the client will reward you with bottles of whiskey. <laughs> 100%. And, and listen, see those trainers out there that talk and talk and talk and make the edited videos and, and you know, try to sell the owners on everything. And they're, they're talking nonstop. It's not a good look. And no one falls for it, you know. No, no one falls for it, and, and well, it, it, a lot of people. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's a big disservice to, to what they do to themselves, you know. And and what can you do? I I think it comes from an insecurity, and I think if people aren't real confident in the work that they can do with the dog, they're going to talk a lot and try to convince the owners of things. You understand well, what I'm saying? Everybody has a script. That, they got to and then right. they've got to hit these words. And when I go to work with these trainers, I change my shadow program to shadowing them at their business. And they got a script. And if the client messes them up, you can see that the wheels kind of get messed up, and they they got to uh, they got to go back. But in the script, it's so hollow. I call it like empty Easter eggs. The client doesn't get anything from that script. Nothing. And Nothing. Uh, Zip up. But don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You gotta, you gotta get your chops. But don't fall in love with the script that you're giving because you'll fall in love with yourself too much and you will harm dogs. That's my only concern. 
is a dog. Well said. You know, and it's funny, Lynn, because when I have a client for that send home lesson, I make it very clear to them. I said, I'm going to keep this so simple today. And I tell them, you're going to screw it up. But we're going to keep it simple enough to where you won't screw your dog up, no matter how you mess it up. Because I could sit here for three, four or five hours and talk to you to boo in the face. You're not going to remember anything of what I say. So it's useless. <laughs> Use your time with that, you know, because they're not going to. They're not going to retain it. You understand what I'm saying? But if I could send people away with something so basic, the basic fundamental communication system between the owner and the dog, something so easy that they can run for the next week or two, we're going to win. We're going yes. to win because the next time we eat, I'm going to see the mistakes and we're going to improve on that. And we keep building. But it takes times of meeting with a client to where they finally get it. The light bulb clicks. If you're doing private lessons, they're going to learn along the way. They have no choice. But when you do a board and train and you send that dog home and you've already, dogs already made the mistakes with you. It's much harder for those people to learn. It takes them time. You know what I mean? Mistakes. It's very important to to guide yeah, them absolutely. through the full stage. To give them only two hours. Hundred percent. I'm. I. We're the mistakes. The mistakes is where the learning happens for the dog and the people. You have to have the mistakes. Again, that's why you can eat chicken without having your diarrhea. Because somebody made those mistakes for you, you know. Uh, I, you Let's know, we're talking. It's almost like we. I'm it, gonna. What's that? I'm gonna get diarrhea no matter what I eat, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I see what you eat because you show everybody. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. I get it. I get it. You know. Not good. It's I get all good. it. Um, yeah, I, I but think you know, other we, here. we no, I you love know it's it's funny, Lynn. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, this is my first time ever having one of these things, so I, I, it's all new really? to me. So please, ever no, I don't, I don't do it. I on my, uh, you know, I started a private kind of a membership, a tiered membership, and I did my first live with them last week. But this is my first time doing a live with with somebody and having all of these questions. So it's all brand new. Well, you remember my text. I was like, wait a second. What? You told everybody. Oh, no, no. I, I don't know what that. Uh, uh, you still need to look I, saw, I saw the live panic there. <laughs> Man, but look, look, here's the funny thing. We don't train exactly the same, but the goal, the end goal and the desire is all the same. Yes. No difference. We, we we both want the same exact thing. We do a lot of things similar. We have a lot of similar moves, and we get there in different ways at times. And I just hope people understand that. You know? And I, I just wrote something about that. You could take the 10 best trainers on the planet. No one does everything. The same. Nobody. Everybody does things different. The only thing that truly matters is what the dog perceive. How does the dog see it? How does the dog feel about it? If all is in the positive, if it's all good, you're going to do okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to do it. Right. Yeah. The dog don't follow a script. They don't care about who you are or how much money you have or how big your house is or what books you've read or the lingo that you use. The only wow. thing they care about is how do they feel when they are in your presence? That's yeah. it. That's it. Do they understand what you want? Do they understand? Do you, no, do you understand what they want? Yeah, that's right. That's right. If you understand me, I want to understand you. And so it's a it's a thing like that. I come at it from a, you know, I like I said, I don't do any, not a single lick of obedience, not not one ounce of it. Uh, and I don't know what that makes me look like in the dog world. Obviously, it's not a pleasant one. Uh, because I'm finally just now with Larry Crone, right? But uh, 
it it's I don't I, I've let go of the idea that I've got to be something that all of the world likes. All I care about is that I know I can communicate with a dog and when the human the the owner sees their dog light up like they just heard like somebody heard their language for the first time they they want they're all in at that point and that's that's all that matters to me well one of the things i say lynn is uh the 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 a person a person can hate me no dog ever will you know that's right and and i did a video a couple of years ago that i got a lot of shit about and basically it was something about why you need obedience to fix behavioral problems. And holy shit, man, that lit a firestorm. People were furious. And right. I told them, I said, listen, for years, I didn't do obedience. I did no obedience. And I was pretty damn good about fixing behavioral problems. But I didn't do down, sit, come, place, none of this stuff. You know, none of this stuff. So I'm telling you from experience, you don't need obedience to fix behavioral problems. You just don't. I get it's part of it. It's the dessert. It's the whipped cream and the cherry on top. But you can get very far without it. And yep. some people have a real hard time with that and they just don't understand it. You know, that just tells me that they lack an understanding of how important behavior is. That's all it's telling me, you know. And for the people that finally and they make that switch, they're like, I totally understand it now. There, there are changes when it comes to that interaction with yep. the dog. It really does. But if, if I have one ability, what, what can you do? Oops, sorry, sorry. No, uh, go ahead. You're good. You know, when people tell me I have a gift, I have to accept what their perception of the gift is because they're seeing. Uh, something that they've got a dog that's been they've been told six times that they got to put the dog down and they're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel so their emotion is saying that I have a gift I that's not my gift uh, it if it's a gift I teach dog psychology but I do it by humanizing dog psychology so I I bring human ideas to a situation so the people can understand, and then I help them understand that now look at it deeper from the dog's point of view. And that's really uh, an important thing when you can see, when, I lost my train of thought. I think it was something about how cool I am, but I don't know, I <laughs> lost my train. But it's funny, you, it's funny you say that, Lynn, because I've talked about this before, where obviously humanizing the dog is one of the biggest issues we deal with. Yeah. But at the same time, there are many trainers out there that work so hard at not humanizing the animal, they have an opposite effect. That hurts them right. too. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. And I've talked about the same thing before because when you start taking this animal and you think it's a living, emotional being with feelings, you're done. You can't succeed. You'll never bring out the best in that animal until you understand that it is an emotional being. You have to understand that. But when and you that, try so hard not to humanize it, you hurt yourself, hurt the dog. You do. You, you, it's like a narrator, you know, and that's where I was going with it. Uh, if you watch my videos, I'm talking to the dogs like they're a human, but it's only yeah. because yeah. I'm talking to the humans that are watching. And so when I'm talking to them and it right. seems like they know what Lynn's saying, it's not that they understand my words. I understand what they're feeling and I say it out loud for everybody to hear and so that they can understand it. You can think of it this way, but you've got to do it the way they understand. And 100%. Yeah. So when you watch my videos and it looks like I, I'm having a well, I literally am having a conversation out loud in English and they seem to be doing the things that in response, like they understand English. It's right. not because they understand English. It's because I understand them and I'm narrating 
for the humans watching. That's that's the only gift I think I have is to be able to translate that. That's all. Totally, I totally get it. I I, I understand that completely. You know, and uh, that that that's where we're very similar. You know, where I'm not afraid to act like an idiot with a dog. Mm. You know, I can care less who sees me, what people think. I enjoy. I enjoy the, the animal, big, you know, and and, and and sometimes, sometimes a dog needs to be real stoic and real mellow and not show a lot of emotion, but sometimes just acting like a straight up idiot is very beneficial for the dog, that's you know, key. and I'm not afraid to do that. That's a key right there yeah. is to be able to see when they need this and when they need that. That that is called timing through you know you got to have the understanding uh, of when you can and so sometimes somebody sees me talking to the dog this way so they start talking to the dog that way but they don't understand that the timing is wrong there's nothing wrong with giving affection to the and dog. It's a i sleep with my dogs but i sleep with my dogs after they understand the rules and how everything is going to work and as soon as as soon as they start to take that, oh, well, I can do this. Well, no, you can't because you're going to go back over here and then we'll try again. So I love loving right. the dog. Right. But there's times when they do not need a fucking human in you one bit. They do not need the human in you. They need someone who understands what they need. And it's not a human. And sure. I I, you could. 100 percent you you nailed it you know you 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 uh you absolutely uh you know that a hundred percent there and it's it's a feeling each dog you have to have a feeling of that you can't explain to someone you either have that ability or you don't you know yeah. and the trainers who have that ability yeah. know, know exactly what we're talking about a lot of trainers, you can see from a mile away, they just don't have that. And they're never going to. And it doesn't make them people. It doesn't even make them bad trainers. But no. the ones that can really connect with the animal, they have that ability to have that feeling with the animal. You know and what I, I mean? Point right and, there. There are so many aspects to the dog world, the dog business, the dog industry. If you don't have the ability to do something that I'm doing, that does not equal a bad person, a bad trainer. There are plenty of things that you can do. What makes a bad person and a bad trainer is taking on things that you know you're incapable of doing and then taking money for that and knowing you're giving a poor product back. If you don't know how to do something, do you know that the only reason why I learned dog psychology is because I told a client, I can't get your dog where it needs to be. I heard about this guy. I think we should go there. And if you, anybody, if you can't do something with a dog and you tell a client that's beyond my ability, but I'm going to find somebody who can, you know what happens first? The dog is taken care of. The, the right. owner is happy. The person you bring in gets paid and sees you in a different light. You get to learn something you didn't know. And nine times out of 10, 100%. when that owner gets asked, where do I get a dog trainer? They're gonna say, I know someone, and if they can't do it, they'll find someone who can. That, that right. is the most important thing. Where is your limitation? Understanding your inabilities, to the highest degree becomes a map to your abilities. I promise you. But sure. you got to you got to step back. 100%. You got to step back. Yeah. A lot of people can't do that. I know. A lot of people I know. can't do that. You know, you know what a lot of training in that situation, they say put the dog down, can't be fixed. And that's because mm. I admit other people can do it, I just can't. That's I, a problem. And I don't want no. anybody to know that I can't do it. So if I can't do it, no one can. So you got to put this dog down. That's, That's right. horrible. That's right. It's right. Horrible. It's and unfortunately, horrible. that's. 
But very common. You know, easy, you know how easy it is to say to somebody, I don't do that, but I know someone who does, or I don't do that, but I'm going to find someone who does know how to do that so that I can learn how to do that. And that sure. solves all the problems, solves everybody's problems. Sure. I, there's been so many times yeah. where I took a dog in that I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I, I'm, I'm not even charging you because I want to learn how to do this. And whether I got to bring someone else in or I got to take extra time, this is my education. And there's no reason to charge for that. But there's also no reason to do when something. I trained, I, I trained dogs for several years without charging because <laughs> that was my classroom. That's, I, I, I couldn't charge right? for that. Yeah, and I, and I loved it. I was doing what I was doing, and every dog was a new experiment for me, and I was learning. I didn't charge for it. You know, I just I just did it. People would knock on my door. Hey, can you help me with my dog? Let's do it. You know, I didn't charge for that. It took me a long time before I started charging people for it. And then it wasn't easy for me. I couldn't right. believe someone was handing me a check for me to do something that I would honestly do for free at any time. You know, I know. It was I, crazy. I don't know if it's it was, it was absolutely. But I'll tell everybody a secret. I lived in a kennel for 10 years, no kitchen. And there was a period of that time where I had a girlfriend and the first facility I lost. I was actually homeless for two months with 14 dogs. I was still rehabilitating in a van. But before I went homeless, I had a girlfriend that I loved, that I would have married. And I told her to go home. Go back to, I'm not going to say the state, go back because this isn't going to work. Well, why don't you come here? And we, we can do that. That's not my path. And I'm sorry that I brought you into this. You got to go. Because that, that was necessary. I, there's no way I was going to drag someone else into my, my mission. But that's how much I love dogs. And again, it might be this and Larry, but I, I hope she isn't watching, but she's a very, very good, very good dog trainer. And I, I, I wish, sometimes I wish I didn't send her away, but if I did not send her away, she would have left and it would not have been good. We have to understand our abilities and we have to understand our inabilities and we have to accept them. And when you do accept them, there's a freedom in that. And when you can feel that freedom, I was homeless, but man, I was free and I was learning. I have a skill that most people don't even need. I have a skill level that no one needs, but that was my goal. That was my goal. Anyway. Except and it's your kind of funny, Lynn, because I'm kind of I'm kind of opposite because I love doing it, but I wasn't going to pursue it. And it was my wife who said, you have to do this. Just do it. Ah. You know, just push me, kick me full into it and kind of force me into it. You know, and, and, and thank God she did. Sure. That's a woman you never let go of. Right. Right. And so um, everything I've done, everything I have, everything and every aspect of my life is because she pushed me. Do it. Sacrificed herself, you know, to, to do it. There's times we can't go on vacation because, you know, I have dogs here. I have dogs coming in. I have dogs coming from across the country. We can't go on vacation. We have the money, we have the time, we have the ability. But I can't because someone we loves so much. Well, sorry, this time delay. Yeah. That, no, no, that no, would no. Be no, you're you're but but it, it would be a dream awesome. dad who cares about it, you it, so much that they're willing to sacrifice their life to help yours get better because they know in the end. Theirs is going to be better too. Now I've seen pictures of your and, wife, and she's strong. She's strong. 
And she has. She always she always has. Or else honestly a very good chance that I wouldn't be doing this today because at the time I already have a career that a lot of people would kill to have. Absolutely. You know, we were doing really well. There was no reason to make all these sacrifices. And because of the dog stuff, we made a ton of sacrifices. And it was because she pushed me into it, kicked me in the ass and said, you have to do this. You know, she didn't accept anything else. There were times where I booked a trade show, you know, and I'd show up to do a trade with my dog. And it was so awful and redneck and so white trash where I was like, no fucking way I'm doing this. And she being the brown girl was like, we're going to do it. Don't worry about it. Line. And some of those moments changed everything for the business, you know? And uh, well, shit, my dog that put me on the map, our Rottweiler, Bruno, what a lot of understand was I had to go away for six months for my government job. I was gone. That dog was a puppy. He was a motherfucker. Worst puppy we ever had. And and our daughter was born. So my wife had our old uh the worst Rottweiler puppy you've ever seen in your life and a new baby. And so there was a time where I'm thinking we can't keep this dog. There's no way. He's a savage. And I'm not here. So I'm thinking we have to find this dog a home where my wife says, just do what you have to do. I'll take care of the dog. And every single day of her life, she'd put a backpack on the dog with 10 pounds of rice on each side in the backpack. The Rottweiler, who was a motherfucker on one side, our other dog on the other side of the baby stroller and would run for 45 minutes to an hour just to have enough training and the energy to control this dog for the six months I was gone. That's the dog that put me on the map. That's the dog that got me recognized to where people wanted me to be dogs. So without her, I never get recognized. These are things that I don't get to talk about all the time. But never she's the know. one who kept in the house. You understand what I'm saying? She's the one who did that. She cursed me out a lot, but she did it. She did it because for me. She did it for me. And so I'm very, very blessed, blessed for that reason. You know, turned out to be the best dog I ever had in my life. I don't know if you and can see that. That's yeah. him right there. That dog changed my life in every way. In every single way. You oh, know, and you uh, that Rottweiler. You need to have some sort of a shadow name or something with your wife because you're saying that dog changed your life, but the only way that dog changed your life is because your wife pushed you into changing your life. 100%. You know, and, and people don't understand. I can never ex explain, you know. Um, you know, I did a seminar in Australia last year and and someone asked me a question about that dog because he's a pretty well-known dog. You know, he's pretty visible. And it's been four or five years since I lost him. And someone asked me a question in our, and I started answering it and I had to leave. I had to walk out because mm. I can't hear the question because that dog had that much of an impact on my life. He mm. taught me that much. So when I was getting all the credit, when I started being, I guess, discovered, dog training world for working with these difficult dogs there's no way in hell i could have without his help he was unbelievable around these dogs like incredible it would blow my mind every time i worked with a dangerous dog with him at night. blew my mind the shit this dog would do i couldn't even explain it you know That's he was unreal he's a once in a lifetime dog I haven't been able to get another Rottweiler and my daughter's begging me, begging me to get another one. And I haven't been able since because when I lost that dog, it destroyed me. It destroyed wow. me. It really, and I'm so scared. I'm so scared to go through it again. You know what I mean? Well, now, two things. 
Uh, just two things real quick. Uh, I call that a, a pack dog, a dog who understands the ability or has the ability to understand what you, their leader, wants and needs and understands the, the dysfunction with the dog that you're working with. And they have that ability to, to be the, the middleman. That's what I call a good pack dog. There are some dogs that are good pack dogs and pet dogs. Some pet dogs can't be pet dogs. Some pet dogs are not anywhere near good pack dogs. That right there, you had a great pack dog because he, he was able to be a narrator or, or a translator between the two of you. And uh, the other thing I want, I want to say about that is get another Rottweiler. Just don't call him Bruno. Don't look at Bruno. Don't. <laughs> it's never going to, you're never going to ever have another Bruno. But you can have another Rottweiler that's no. amazing. You can right. have a Rottweiler that's amazing. It may right. not be a good pack dog, but it'll be a beautiful specimen of a Rottweiler. And when we're afraid of something so badly, that's the first thing we need to be really focused on. You know, the only way through that fear is all the way through. And uh, don't deprive yourself of a beautiful species or a beautiful breed like the Rottweiler. Honor Bruno by having another one. It might be the it might be a shit stick of a dog that gets away with murder, but if you love that breed, get another one, man. Don't deprive yourself. Don't deprive yourself. There's no need. I didn't I didn't think I didn't think we'd ever be without. I didn't think I'd be without. But uh breathe. It was hard. I know, man. That dog was, he did things for my family that people know. I wouldn't have what I have today if it wasn't for him. Seriously. So, do you feel like if you got another Rottweiler right now that you'd be disrespecting him? No, no. No, not at all. Um, you just don't want to feel that pain. I hear you. I hear you. Then you're not ready. Yeah, it was the worst. It's all good, though. It's all good. Though. It was the worst, man. It was. It was, it was tough. I think a big part of it was because it's when I was in that building mode to build the business, trying to build my name. And we just, we went everywhere together, cross country trip, you know, mm -hmm. me and him, me and him mm -hmm. in a car driving across the United States. Oh, you know, we, we, that was my, uh, and I was in awe of him to watch how he would how he would interact with these dogs that wanted to kill us. It was like, holy, sh I, I was just blown away. I was blown away uh, by the connection that I had with this dog and how he would try to communicate. It blew me away. I just, I haven't been able to... No. I hear you. Man. It's different. It, um, I think if unless you've had a, a Rottweiler, at least for me, maybe I'm just different. You know, they're so expressive; they give you so much. It's hard. It's hard know, it's when when they go. It's it's like losing that, a, a a person. It it is because they've got a roundish kind of squarish face, like a human. Uh, that that woman that I told you that I was in love with that I sent on her way because I loved her. Uh, 
her favorite dog is a Rottweiler and her dog was amazing. And I fell in love with the Rottweilers because of her Rottweiler. And, uh, they are, they have, they have an ability to, to show something in their face that's different than the average. Yes. Um, yes. I think it's because it's yeah, around very, very, it's very human almost. And, uh, but yeah, I love Rob. That dog, her dog, I called her lifeguard. All right, lifeguard. And she would go to the dogs that had the problems that needed to be lifeguarded. And uh, she would put them down when they needed to be. When I called lifeguard, they, they, there is like a, a communication level that's different with the Rottweiler. So it's unreal. It's unreal. It's incredible to watch. It's absolutely, and that's why to this day, you know, um, my wife and son, they're like ready for a little dog, you know, and, and I think I am too. This day, I said that the other day, you know what, maybe we'll go get a little dog. And my daughter, who's 15, like hit the roof. She's like, no, we need we're a Rottweiler. And, <laughs> and her and Bruno were, were born just a couple of months apart, you know, mm. so they were in separable i mean they were inseparable and she has never let that go like mm -hmm. never she doesn't want to hear nothing else i get 10 or 20 you. pictures a day on my Neither have you larry <laughs> no yeah you're right right i haven't i haven't and she's on me every day sending me pictures look at look at this rottweiler look at this puppy look at this rock all day Every day, she, she's she's what, you know what's she's it gonna take, Mary? What do we, we got to do right now to get a to get a Rottweiler in front of you? What's it gonna take? Uh, you know, you know, that's a great question. I I don't know. I've I've met some that when I have one here, I'm a different person. I yeah. fall in love with that family. You know what I mean? I and I do. I I connect with them big time. Um, man, I I, I guess it, it, I guess I really have just been a little little scared to go that again because man, it it destroyed me. It just absolutely destroyed me. You know, and uh, but I think it's time. I, I I do think it's. I definitely you, think it's time. When you use words like destroy, destroyed me. Uh, what's happening, in my opinion, is that you're devolving. There's a period of time for grieving. There's a period of time for denying, delaying. But the longer you go, the more you devolve. You've already described how you're a different person when one is around. You have a... Yeah. I don't have a family. You have a strong family, okay? Even if, and Rottweilers are prone to bone cancer quick, all right? Even if you got a Rottweiler that only lives six months, you have a strong, strong family base that will never let you down. And if you have a dog, even a Rottweiler for only six months, it's the best six months of that dog's life. It's the best six months of your life. You're depriving yourself right now, Larry. And I don't think that you should do it's that. It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that, Lynn, because we lost our, our first one to bone cancer at six years old. And that was rough. That oh. was that was, really? that was that's when that's when my wife that's when my wife was pregnant with Sophia. Mm. We lost our first one is six months old to bone cancer, well, that's, you know. That's and, and that's an interesting point right there. You lost your first yeah. not while at six years old. First of all, that's a tragedy tragedy but yeah. rottweilers do get bone cancer more than most then you got right. bruno shortly after that one yeah why was there such a short gap between the dog that you lost and bruno and why such a long gap between bruno and your next rottweiler right yeah i'm sorry i do when my x-ray and I, it bothers people and I apologize, but I can, I don't no. think you should, 
I don't think you should delay anymore. I think that you should help yourself and your family. Now, don't do it because your daughter says to do it and she's 15 and she's daddy's girl. I'm saying that <laughs> it might be time. It might be time to just step forward and test the waters again. And you've got a strong family, a net that will never let you fall. Okay. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'm here, dude. Killing me. Nah, well, that's what I do. It's the, that's the that's one thing uh -huh. I have a hard time. I don't know. And, you know, I just can't explain it. So one thing I have a hard time talking about. One thing I stay away from. But you you're know, talking about it tonight. One thing I stay away from. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I do think... Uh, I do think I'm ready. I'm ready for the, for the next. You know, it's different for me. For me, I love my Malinois. Um, Mango, our female, is phenomenal. My goal with her, Lynn, to make her a combination of Bruno, our Rottweiler, and and Luca, our Malinois. And that's what she is. I've I've definitely succeeded there. She's a she's a phenomenal family. She really is. You know. So so then you but, uh, can do something. Yeah, I, I think you set a goal and you accomplished it. What can we do sure. yeah. to get Larry to set a new goal that's going to provide him with a better life? They don't because when I wake up, my inbox is going to be full of Rottweiler breeders wanting to give me a puppy. That's what <laughs> I do. I've been there. I do. I'm, I'm Woody Woodpecker, by the way. I'm Woody Woodpecker that Great. that guy the problem you know he just makes trouble but my trouble that i make is all about good so no that's that's awesome that's good uh yeah there you go casey my my friend casey clients says i feel like the therapy session this is beautiful yeah now it's it's good stuff casey for real and and it's the dog world you know and the quicker people understand these dogs our psychology, our issues, our problems, our happiness, our sadness in these animals in a, an immense way, like in a tremendous way, you know. And a lot of times the issues we have, good or bad, we put them onto our animals. It, they're mirror, we mirror. We mirror them or they mirror us. That's all there is to it. Sure. We, we just don't want to. We just don't want to put a consciousness onto a dog that it doesn't have. And so, absolutely. If you if you know you're going to get a Rottweiler and start thinking about Bruno, then I don't want you to get a Rottweiler. I want you. Yeah, yeah. To enjoy the breed and you, you, whatever dog that dog is going to be. You you know, in the the issue. The reason we were able to enjoy Bruno is we never had to make him, you know, I understand that. We didn't try to make him Cyrus our first, you know. We didn't do that. I understand very much so that each dog is each dog. You're not going to get a, a repeat, you know. But, uh, yeah, for, for, for our human emotions dictate what we do and put on our so much. Even when we know we're doing it, I'm very cognizant of this stuff. You know, I'm very. I'm, I'm guilty and, too. <laughs> sure, I'm guilty too. We all are. Yeah, we 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 all are, and it's hard to catch ourselves. And even at times, when we do catch ourselves, sometimes you just don't give a fuck. You know, you just you just need that outlet, and you don't care. You don't you don't want to do it different you know but uh yeah that's 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 uh interesting you know uh mark asked lynn what breed is there a breed that speaks to you a specific breed if you had to pick one uh well i love the mutt my favorite is the mutt because every one of them is unique i'm a mutt i don't even know what my background i have no clue what my background <laughs> is but you know if i were 
if I I let I love when they look like they're wild, like they just came off the plains. You know, my favorite of all time is the the African wild dog. So when they look wild like that, that that's my favorite. Now, if I have to pick a breed, who was it that asked about the breed? It was a uh, Mark Oppenheimer. All right, Mark. If I gotta pick a breed, <sighs> hmm. Some sort of a shepherd type. I really like that because they're they're pretty close. But then I like the French Bulldog, by the way. I really love the French Bulldog. Um, because they're you know, they they stand their ground no matter how big they are. Uh, if I get a full breed dog, it's either going to be a Malinois, not one that's a working Malinois, one that's bred for temperament and family. I don't want the high drive thing. I love the way I love the way the Malinois looks. The ones that have like the really black legs and the tan. Oh my God! It's amazing. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. So yeah, I guess if I'm going to pick a breed. It, it'll be like a Malinois, but I want the temperament. I, I do not want the, the, the working Malinois. I do not want one that's so high drive and, and uh, I, I don't, I'm old. I don't have time for that anyway. I want one. I want one that's going to be right there by my side, you know, but the mutt. I'm grateful to say, I'm grateful to say, Lynn, that I have both. I have no. two Malinois. That have the working drive and the ability, but they're family pets first. I see. Number them. one. For, for, two, for two reasons, they're well bred with Mohawk Malinois. My friends John and Paula do a beautiful job breeding dogs properly. We raise them as family pets first. And so I get the best of both worlds. And that is really hard to beat. It's, uh, I didn't expect that from you. I didn't expect that. And I think that's pretty awesome. And I think it's a damn shame that people don't think that you could have both a Malinois. That's a great family pet. Cause I have it two times over at the same time right now, you know? And if you understand the behavior of dogs, like we've been talking about all night, you could have that too. You can. Anybody can have that. Yeah. Just because you have a Malinois doesn't mean it has to be an asshole. But, but originally, you, people you encourage it. You're right. Right. Now, sure. I don't know. If you, I don't know if you know uh, my dog Kalevra, which means bad dog in Hebrew. And I, I'm not Jewish, but I saw it in a movie. Kalevra means bad dog. He's such a great dog. If you look at him, he looks like a, a white uh a Malinois. He really does. He's got white shepherd and uh, Siberian Husky in him. And when you look at him, he's got the profile of a Malinois, but he's all white. And so I really love the shape and the, the, the drive and the, and the <laughs> engagement that they, that they have. So Mark, if I'm going to get a, a purebred dog, if I'm forced to get a purebred dog, it would be a Malinois, a specific one though. No. But great question. Yeah, I like my mouths. I like my spoilers. I love my pit bulls. I love my tangles. I'm all across the board on the breeds I like. Can I say something about all the questions? Everybody that's listening sure. and watching and putting in the questions, I'm sorry that I'm not I, I'm old. I can't even see. I don't know if there's a way for me to get the questions later. I'd love to answer them. I first of all, I just want you to know I'm not ignoring you. I'm so happy that you're here involved with this thing. And I don't want you to feel neglected if your question wasn't answered. That's very important to me. Very important to me. I don't know if I can ever answer the questions, but thank you for putting them in. Thank you for being involved in here. That's sure. I want to make sure I, I say that. Sure. Gary Abamondi says, this is real as it gets. Thanks for the honesty. Got me thinking about many of mine. I need a dress. It's awesome, Gary. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this immensely. John's 
Stansberry. I feel like your situation, Larry, with the new Roddy will come to you and you'll be all, all over the place and we'll know that's the one for sure, John. I agree with you, buddy. You know, ah, Casey, y'all may cry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Casey. It's, it's something I just met us still have our time with. Don't apologize for making anybody cry. First of all, anybody who works with me cries. It's a, it's a known thing. Everybody cries when they work with me. I was. Yeah, I, I deal with a lot of that, too. I, I deal with a lot of that, too, for sure, because uh, you, you're connecting on a deep level with people and you, you truly care about everything going on. Happen. Bridget Gore says, hey, Bridget, my husband was the same way. He had a great, great career. I do what I do because my wife makes it easy and never says no to me. Yeah. For you, Bridget, still breaks my heart over your loss. Um, but it, it's uh, having a good woman behind you definitely makes life for any man a, a lot better, a lot easier for sure. But listen, and and you guys don't, un most people don't know. I'm a dog trainer. I'm a federal agent. Before I met my wife, I was the opposite of a federal agent. Then that, that's all I'll say. Believe me when I tell you. <laughs> Oh, I mean, believe me, and, and believe me when I tell you, when I retire in five months, a little more talking. But if I wrote a book, if I wrote a tell all book, I promise it would sell a lot of copies. And a lot of people would think it's fiction. And it's and that's all because of my wife. You know, yet with people, what some people realize, I've been with my wife since we're 18 years old, since we were in high school together. High yeah. school sweethearts? And so, high, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Wow. Up wow. until the point, up until that point, I was not federal agent or donor material. Believe me when I tell you, all yeah. of that is because of her. If I told you For her, stories, I would not be here today. If I told you stories about me, you'd arrest me. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I wouldn't because I have, <laughs> I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't because of her. Let's just say that, you know, and in a few months when I'm there, we'll, I'll be a little more out front, up front with, with people and talk about people will think I'm full of shit. I promise you. I absolutely promise you, you know, so I'm very, very lucky to be in the position I am in today. But you know what, Lynn? It's 10 o'clock. We're at three hours. Maybe we'll we'll cut it off now. Um, Don't even I could know. probably do this all night. When you love what you do, it's not work. I I really, really enjoy this, but I'm a I'm I'm literally very close to peeing my pants. I Me have too. to be so bad. I don't think I can hold it. <laughs> I don't go. think I can hold it any longer. What? What do you? But uh, say this has been fantastic. Oops, sorry. What do you say? And what do your don't followers worry. say about us doing something like this again? I love to do it. It doesn't matter with anyone thinks. I think they'd enjoy it. But I can tell you, I really enjoyed this. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this. And so we we have to again. And I think I think it's good to get two trainers. You know, what your ideology is to talk. It's good yeah. for people to see more than side. You know, it's very, very important that people see many sides of dog training. Two dog trainers are the same. And the more and sides you see, the more you're going to take from it. Go ahead, buddy. What's even better is that we're not saying I'm better than you and you're better than me. When those trainers get together, that's that's not that's not conversation. That's not even debate. All right. And so we are completely different, but we're kind of exactly the same. It's one of the things I say all the time. Everything is exactly sure. the same, except it's completely different. And I sure. enjoy well, the first things I tell. I appreciate you, Lynn, and I enjoy you. And one of the first things I tell people when I do a workshop is anything I do or say on this whole weekend doesn't mean it's the only way to do things. It doesn't even mean it's the best way to do things. I'm just right. telling you the way I do things. 
take it or leave it. Doesn't mean it's the best way. It, it's just how I do things. You know what I mean? And uh, I just hope more people start seeing that. But let me tell you something, brother. I truly enjoy this. Like, I, I really, too. really enjoy this. And if I, I agree. if I didn't have to pee so bad, I'd keep it going. But we will only do it again. And uh, from the amount of people that saw the first hour, I think they're going to to probably want us to do it again also because there was, uh, like I said, one hour, there were 1,500 people who saw that first hour. And I that, don't, that's, that's I don't uh, know anything about Facebook or how this stuff works. So you must, that's a lot of people, apparently, the way you're saying that. So I don't. It's a lot. Okay. It's All right. A lot. Well, let's, yeah. Let's make it, it happen it, again. All I really want to do is educate. That's all I want to do. That's it. That's it. If we can help one person at a time become a little better, Lynn, the dogs are going to reap the rewards. And no matter what we do or say, it comes down to does it benefit the animal? If it benefits the animal, we have to try to do it. That's it. You understand, buddy? I appreciate you, my friend. This was awesome. I had a good time. I had a really good time. And we will do it again real soon, okay? When there's not a hurricane in the area and we don't have technical difficulties. All right. <laughs> we'll do that. And you better right. be prepared because I'm I'm getting ready to, to get a bus and build it into a home. And I'm traveling. And one of the places I'm going to stop is in Kentucky. Bring it. <laughs> Come on over, buddy. Wait and you have a good weekend, okay, Lynn? And thank you for doing this. I enjoyed it, buddy. Thank you to Take everybody. Care, buddy. Have a good night. Everybody watch, yeah. thank you. Everybody who watches it tomorrow or whenever it's back up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys rock. Thanks for the support, guys. Y'all have a good weekend. Peace.